Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I thought I'd go over some advanced tips and techniques for converting color photographs to black and white using NX Studio. I've also done a basic uh, conversion from color to black and white in NX Studio video as well. Uh, but here I wanted to go over some things if you wanted a little more creative control and things to consider. Uh, also I'll point out some of the the features that NX Studio does not have, at least not yet, and other programs may have. Uh, so uh, those are some things to consider uh, in the future, or if you really want those particular things, you may have to go to a different program. At any rate, you'll notice this, this picture is a little bit underexposed, and that was done on purpose. We go to info right here, it says exposure compensation negative one EV. The reason I did that is I wanted to make sure that I got plenty of uh, detail up in the sky captured because uh, it was a very bright day. Uh, so uh, we can actually do exposure compensation. And if we put plus one on there, uh, that's how it, it, it normally looks, but we actually probably even have more detail in here uh, because if we exposed it normally, we may have actually lost some of this detail because of the brightness. Uh, clouds have a tendency to uh, lose detail or blow out uh, easier on very bright days, particularly when the sun is hitting it sharply. Uh, particularly very fluffy white clouds. These aren't fluffy white clouds. Uh, um, so uh, they don't tend to blow out quite as much. So let's put this back to where it was. And so we need some more shadow detail in here. So what we're going to do is go down to shadow protection. And we're going to bring that up. And we can bring it up to whatever level that we, we want or feel comfortable with. Now we're going to convert this to black and white, but it's good to get a lot of this stuff set first, then go to black and white, and then we're going to, you'll see we'll go back to the color and back and forth to change things uh, because some of the settings in black and white are affected by the color, as we'll see in a second here. So the what we're going to do is we're going to go here to uh, this, and right now it's set to recorded value under picture control. We want to go to monochrome. And uh, so this looks pretty good right here, but what we're going to do is go down here to where it says filter effect. Now in NX Studio, um, it has filter effect, which emulates what happens with a color filter on black and white film. So it's a little bit different and a little bit more subtle often than when you have a, a, a monochrome con color control on, uh, say, Lightroom or, or other programs where you can uh, adjust each particular color because the effect there is, uh, is, is a little bit more precise. So this is kind of emulating the analog effects of a, a filter on film. So if we go down here to filter effect, if we go to yellow, see the sky darkens a little bit. Orange, it will darken a little bit more. And red darkens more. Now green will actually uh, lighten the, the, the foliage slightly. So if we went from none and then to green, you can see it just brightens slightly. Uh, but more than likely we're usually interested in getting the cloud detail in the sky, particularly in black and white photographs. Uh, so we're going to just put this back to none and we're going to go back to kind of standard color right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little trick here. Now we're going to go down here to where the color temperature is and shift it all the way to blue. You want to do this with a normal uh, photograph, uh, but uh, since we're doing it to black and white, it, it gives us the ability to make the sky actually darker using the filters. So if, if we go back up here and we go back to monochrome, and then we go back down to where the filter effect is and put on red, which is the most extreme. You can see 
it's uh, it's very uh, dark, or it's darkened quite a bit up in the sky here. We can actually go down here to uh, shadow protection and move up the shadows a little bit more to however we like it, and we can we can mess with the exposure and balance it out however we want. Uh, so those are some tricks right there. Now one thing that NX Studio doesn't do is it doesn't have, or at least not currently, a grain feature. A lot of the other programs will will give you some sort of thing that will emulate uh, the grain of a film photograph. And if you want that, you'll have to use either a separate program that does it or use a different program just to do your conversion entirely. Uh, there are also some programs and plugins, which I'll go in in later videos, that will actually emulate the contrast and the look of a particular black and white film and even the grain. And it will give you the ability to tweak those the way you like them a lot of times as well. And there are also programs that will emulate color film as well. Uh, and uh, we'll go over those things in other videos. Oh, and one final thing that NX Studio actually does is there's a toning uh, function right here. So you can actually um, make it a sepia tone and you can adjust the saturation of that, how much sepia you want in, in it. You can do the same thing and you can actually uh, just do a regular black and white if you want. And there are some other tones here as well. So you can actually do like a cyanotype this is actually looks to me a little more like what a selenium tone would do. You can adjust this as well so it, it can be more extreme or less extreme. And I think here where it's blue, that to me looks more like a cyanotype. That's more a color of a cyanotype. And you can adjust the saturation of that as well. So you can actually put tints to the black and white photographs to emulate different um, tones that you would find in uh, old photographs. I'm Dean, and this has been Photo Blue, and, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.